Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand what, um, you know, they, they, there's, there's a lot of countries in the, in the world, right, that are, you know, we worry about our own country and maybe we should, but there's a lot of countries in the world that are very, very homophobic, but I feel, you know, and it's like, some of it's subtle, some of it's like beheading bad, right? Like, you know, and there's like a whole kind of gradient of uh, weird religious shit, state-sponsored stuff or whatever. Um, and there's one country in particular, though, that it's, it's an insidious thing because they kind of like pretend that they're not the bad guys, right? You know, it's like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, okay, if you want to be gay, that's totally fine. It's just we draw the line very, very understandably so at propagandizing children, right? Uh, we, we draw the It's like, oh, yeah, no, we don't really care what anybody does. There's no reason for the, the UN to get involved. It's just that, like, of course, if you're trying to, like, uh, groom children into being... Uh, you know, into a certain lifestyle so you can take advantage of them. Well, obviously, we have to, like, not allow that. That's a real crime. You know, we haven't you seen those baseball hats that say kill your local pedophile? Yeah, they're talking about this very policy, which is, of course, very reasonable. And, you know, of course, this country is full of shit. It's also part of, like, a larger uh, concerted effort to go and meddle in the affairs of the Ukraine and various other countries around the world. And, of course, I'm talking about Florida. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you're new here, this is the Reverend John Wheeler podcast. I'm Meredith. And that's, that's Meredith. Uh, that's John. And this is the Reverend John Wheeler. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that is very true. But if it, probably if you clicked on it, you read what it was called. Maybe you didn't, though, because I am a bit of a, uh artisanal... Uh, fake thumbnail and clickbait create click bait. Click, yeah, click yeah. Bait creator. Good job. As this is only available on our OnlyFans. <laughs> Which, according to my friend Jake, still won't let you do, like, uh, pee and poop stuff. So it's like, why have an OnlyFans, right? Like, no. if you, 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 you know, you can watch any kind of porno you want in the world, be fixated on one particular person, so you want to watch them do something. But, like, how long are you really connected to that before it's just like, okay, drink a glass of pee, I'm paying money. And then they're like, well, you can't do that, but I can use this dildo. And it's like, okay, like, what are we in fifth grade? Who yeah, fucking cares? <laughs> like, it's such That's a... It's raw deal. It's such a waste for sad, desperate people who just want to feel connected to something. Perhaps they're afraid of getting older. Perhaps they feel like they're not very successful and they just want to cling to the idea that someone out there finds them attractive and loves them. So they start, I mean, sign up for an OnlyFans thing. And and uh, and then, but yet, you know, you cannot be covered in diarrhea. So it's just like, okay, that's, I, you know, at this point I kind of, I have money. And you know what? I'm not spending it there. I'm going to watch free internet porno and live my life. I'm going to get laser eye surgery and, and, and Apple watches and that's it. That's the thing we need to talk about as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I'm gonna I don't get, know if we want to do that. Or do we, I mean, I think we need to talk about Florida in a little bit here. Yeah, like, anything You kind of just Florida. went right in for the... No, yeah, so I did. Like, I thought that would be... Right well, you know, kill. And I kind of want to warm up with some, um, I don't know, laser eye surgery. Okay, yeah, let's let's... <laughs> Despite the title and thumbnail, let's throw everybody off where I almost started making a fun and yet rather uh, misleading and jaded Tim Dillon type point. You and just made, talk about was, my personal life, which no one cares about. Great. And, and yeah. we will go back to that. And if you don't want to talk about your laser eyes, then don't. We'll talk about <laughs> <Florida>. <laughs> laser eyes. Well, okay. I do have a complaint, I guess. Like, And if you follow my Facebook page, and if you're listening to this, you probably, I guess, do. Because, you know, the irony of the uh, podcast is like, oh, yeah, only your friends are going to listen to it. But the truth is two funny things. A, no, they actually even won't. Like, you have a podcast about whatever and you're not already famous. Even your friends are going to like, go, oh, yeah, I'll listen to it. But then also, like, my sphere of influence is much larger than someone who just, like, graduated high school and then went to work. I don't like, listen to your podcast. You and shouldn't. I'm your friend. Yeah, I know. And I'm also on it. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's you. You don't have to watch it, Dottie. You lived it. That's the. <laughs> I don't know why you would listen to it. I mean, I do, but that's because I have to like. A, try to remember what I've already talked about so I don't repeat myself too horribly because God knows I do that in real life a lot, much to everyone's annoyance and chagrin. And also occasionally I do make clips of it to put on the TikTok, which you just don't waste your time with because it's going to be a thing that you're not allowed to use in this country very soon. Yeah, I was going to say, oh God, that is probably a whole nother podcast. Think about that later. What, TikTok? TikTok, about how it's just like fucking gonna be gone. Oh, I know, it's it's good. Well, I'm glad that I saw the writing on the wall because it's also, it is just plain old run terribly. Like, here's the problem with China. Let's go this way. <laughs> As I was on the phone with a, actually like an awesome man from China earlier today at work who's very helpful and good at what he does, but like, uh, who also talks a lot of shit about the rest of China, though, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> but, yeah, no, like... China's almost done. Like, everyone who's concerned that they're going to, like, you know, we watched that, like, fake womb thing a while ago, and we forgot to bring them up because I wasn't as aware of this, but, it, and, and I might have mentioned it on a different podcast, but it's like, they've been lying about their population for, like, a long time and lying about everything, and that they're, they're a bunch of liars there in China, and it's well, funny. Well, they don't have a whole lot of women because Ooh. of their uh, rule that they made back in the... 70s, 80s? Yeah, the one child thing and like... And so, well, and then if they got pregnant, they wouldn't keep it if it was a girl, they'd adopt it out. So that... The yeah, because everyone's like, oh, doesn't. boys make more money because... Well, yeah, and by the way, what a, it's like everyone's like, China's a bunch of commies, and it's like, oh, really? What a, what a perfect example of what short-sighted, smash and grab, line goes up this quarter, fuck next quarter, I don't know, capitalism. Nothing is more... It's like... Everyone just chose, it's like, well, it, you know, boys are more valuable to work on, like, the farm. And it's like, but without girls, like, there's not going to be any more people in two generations. It's like, that's two generations from now's problem. See, I right see, now, I need my farm to work. I think I and was that's... watching something about on Vice where they were uh, interviewing a lot of Chinese men and how they were all very uh, lonely because they yeah. there aren't any women. So they would Because they're make... China. They're not South Korea or Japan. They can't afford <laughs> sex robots. Well, then, no, they started making sex robots. Yeah, to, shitty Chinese their... ones. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> Still, the fact that these men, like, had to resort to dolls, essentially, to fulfill their needs. Um, and it's not just because they're, like, fat nerds, either. It's like, these are guys, no, these are, just, these are no svelte women. men with actual jobs yeah. who just can't, it's yeah. Not they're just women in China. There just ain't none. And that's a, that's a damning fucking condemnation of, of, of sort of, like, a certain part of the culture here in America where there's, like... I think the women still outnumber men, and yet we still have all these, like, mass shootings from weird incels and things. It's like, you know, what do you, what, what? Like, you could be, it's like the starving kids in Africa when you wouldn't clean your plate when you were a little kid. It's like, there's starving kids in Africa. It's like, you know, there's actually a pussy drought in China, fucker. I'll get, America? This is America. Go get him. Oh, there's a Zach there's a Zach Galifianakis uh, stand up bit that I cannot say because it contains the other F word, but he made yeah. a joke about going to he was the only straight kid at an all at all gay school. <laughs> He's like, there, look at all the pussy, you gonna go get some? Like I don't know. It was very funny. But anyway, that's like literally Yeah, there are there are guys starving for pussy in China and there are guys here just like, I'm gonna shoot people because I can't find any. It's like, get out of here. Yeah. So um so I don't know, uh, laser eyes. Oh yeah, right. I don't know why we're yelling about China, but the, the, here's the thing: because I'm running for president, that's why. Uh, no, but no, no. I I want to get laser eye. Look, like the the. I'm just I'm just in a place now where I I have like Apple watches and I can get laser eye surgery. So it's just like I think. And I'm sorry, I'm not Tom Segura. I didn't buy, like, a fleet of Formula One race cars. Don't look at me like I'm the problem. I'm just, like, not living in the poverty I was born into anymore. Oh, no. It only took 42 years. But, uh, yeah, with the option sort of on the table, uh, I really want to do it. And I made a post on Facebook, and people were like, it's worth the money, you know, whatever. And it's like, and again, it's like just enough money where it's still... The old me that's afraid, like Dave Chappelle said, poverty's a treadmill. It's like, you might have $50 million, but tomorrow maybe you won't. And it just causes you to make decisions where you're like, I don't know. But I mean, like, yeah, it's reasonable. It's fine. 
they have like zero percent financing. Like, I, you know, you just have to assume that you'll still be doing okay in in a year. And I guess you, you know, but it's still scary. As simple as they've made it, right? As bladeless of the, as they've made it. Like people were still in the comments being like, yeah, ex you know, it's like, oh yeah, they don't use blades or anything anymore. It's like, oh that's cool. It's like the only <laughs> part that was scary was uh, when they put the thing that holds your eyes still and then they flip your cornea up with the thing. I got, I went oh, blind. God. I'm like, hey, wait, wait, what? Like, did they give you any Valium and then they just didn't respond? But then apparently, You're yeah. You're going to need to get yeah, a metric fuck ton of that. By the way, I, I, somebody did tell me, and I, I, I appreciated this, that they actually, at those types of places, do take into consideration... I think it was Brian Pearson, because I've been talking about this for years, and he did it. Yeah. And, like, he was like, oh, they actually are like, do you drink? Like, they actually, or whatever, they're like, hey, like, how much, like, did you used to take any pill you would find on the floor of the bus when you were in Blue Felix? Like, and then you check the yes box, like, that's specific, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, and it's like, oh, so you need actually, like, a bunch of these, and it won't kill you. I'm like, no, I'm going to need a bunch for it to actually work. It reminds me of when um, I was reading this book about Andre the Giant, and like uh, his, which I recommend his, um, I forget what it's called, but I, maybe I think there's like only one. <laughs> so like, there should be several, but they actually, there's some facet of modern, modern anesthesiology that came from Andre the giant. Hmm. Yes. Because Andre the giant was a drunk. Like he was, <laughs> he was like. The the disorder he had that not only made him big, made him, like, unnaturally strong and, like, even for his size, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was actually, like, a he burned out short and fast kind of because you can't, you're normally not that strong when you're that big. Normally, it's, like, a giant disability, but he could, like, lift people over his head like Hulk Hogan and stuff. And it's, like, it's because of this other, his body was just, like, but it, because of that, he was in constant pain all the time. So he just drank booze to deal with it. Like, that was his thing. Like those pictures of his hand, like holding a beer, and it's like that, you know, like, and it's like people be like, yeah, he would drink like 137 beers in a sitting, but like, he'd pass out in a hotel hallway, and they just had to put like rope or, you know, like the, the velvet rope, rope around him and <laughs> put a tarp over him. So it's like people be like, well, they'll just think he's a couch. Like, we can't fucking, there's like 10 people, we can't move him. So, like, yeah, he was like a giant alcoholic. So they were going to do some kind of surgery on him in his adult life. And, you know, once he got to like his full size and they were like, what, like how much do you drink? Cause they're, cause again, anesthesiology is almost closer to fucking alchemy than science. Like it's kind of random and you can fucking die. Like it's a crazy thing. Like all surgeries are potentially lethal, mm -hmm. not because you're going to like bleed out. Cause they're just like removing them. Like, no, because the anesthesia might kill you. Like it's a crazy thing that we fucking it's only a weird, weird balance kind of only barely yeah. have a grip on. And so, but we have a better grip on it because they were like, well, okay. So, like, we don't know what's going to knock you out versus what's going to kill you. We can base it off your size. But, like, so they asked him how much he drinks. And he's like, I don't know if I can put, like, a number on it. And they, they, But they came to this conclusion where he was like, okay. They're, like, in a general sitting. Like, what's the situation like? And he's like, it takes two liters of vodka for me to start to feel warm. Jesus. Now... If you drink, start to feel warm is, you know, maybe your second whiskey on the rocks. I was going to say, yeah, wow, wow, two wow, wow. liters. Now, those aren't 175s, but I think two liters is still more than a 175 when you add them together. So it's like a little north of the biggest bottle of booze you could legally buy is when I've had my second martini and I kind of start to feel a little warm in the chest. They've actually were like, okay, if you really mean that, like, then this is what we have to do. And they did successful surgeries on him. And then they figured out that somehow or another measuring that per people's like mass and weight or whatever in the future actually like helps them anesthetize people. And then what Brian was telling me, it's like, just tell them all of your shit. And like one of the reasons that people sometimes do die they'd also just die because it gets fucked up. Don't get me wrong. It's not the only reason, but a reason can be that people are like Dr. House has taught us dishonest with their fucking doctor. Mm -hmm. So they're like, 
okay, like, do you ever take recreational Xanax? And you're like, oh, this might, they might tell the police. And they might call my permanent record. And maybe my few, my doctor later will go back and read this. And then he won't give me any more Xanax to abuse. And it's like, and I feel, I feel that. Yeah, we don't want that. So like, but no, you, that's just going directly. Like your medical history is weirdly compartmentalized. And it's actually probably good. Um, uh, so, like, I would be totally honest with, like, yeah, I drink less than I used to, but it's like, well, how many a week? It's like, let's go by day. Like, maybe, yeah. you know, three except for when I don't, which might be about don't, might be, like, three times a week. And, hey, it used to be one of those, like, eh, it was about five a day always, and when I was partying, it was more. So, you know, progress. But, yeah, if I go in there and be like, listen, man, like, fucking... Benzos and stuff actually are one of the only things that actually help my anxiety, but because of that, like, they barely phase me. And, like, mixing them with booze, it's like, let alone will it not kill me, it might not even make me sleep. So, you know, like, if you want me to be calm during the surgery... Also, I have a real thing with my eyes. Yeah, like, I and I've got to say... I um... am like, I know that I can... I think now, therapy and 42-year-old John can get through it once. I know I can't do contacts, I know I can't deal with that every day. I know I can't. And it's going to be terrifying, but I know that I can just force myself to do stuff now. It's like, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to know that they're going to like pump me full of drugs. And it's like, they're not going to get their goddamn $4,000 if I, you know, if this goes wrong or all they can, but I'm not going to, you know, they can send me a bill for wasting their time, but I'm not paying it. I would plan on having your own drugs, like your own Xanax or your own clonazepam just in case. Well, where am I going to get that? By the way, if anybody out there... <laughs> I'm so close to just putting that on Facebook and just be like, look, I don't give a shit. My job doesn't give a shit. Does anyone have Xanax they were trying to get rid of? Like, you know, I don't want to just go to, like, somebody on the street because that's just going to be fentanyl pressed into the shape yeah. of a Xanax and I'm going like, to die. Like, I'm not that stupid, but I'm just stupid enough to put it out there. Uh, but, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't really have my own. So how much do you think it'll cost per eye? I mean, it depends on, like. The, uh, the Whiting oh, Clinic, it was like seventeen fifty an eye, so it's like that's not bad at all. No, I expected I know, it to be like it'll be a little. Three it's grand like per eye. No, it's a little. It's between three and four grand for the whole thing, and that includes it's some. If you go to the right place, that includes like you're gonna have to go back, and it's like yeah, those are all free forever though if you do it. So I mean, it's like well, like, that's that's reasonable. That part of it was part of why I'm like because they're like well yeah the thing is it's cheaper than contacts and glasses but by the time you do all the and all the and all the like the people on Facebook but I'm like uh yeah the places I was looking at are like they just that's rolled in with it though so it actually is worth it well maybe I'll look into it after you do it because well that's going to be the thing they should hire they should pay contacts. me to be a spokesperson because if I can deal with it then exactly. fucking literally exactly. anybody can and I you know I'm not really with my eyes I'm not really you know well, people are also like, oh, once you're over 40, though, it's like, it sucks because you might still have to wear reading glasses. But I'm like, I am 100% like near, you know, like I, I don't have to even sort of wear cheaters or like whatever. Yeah. Like I'm very much like, despite having glasses since I was like 27 or six or whatever, like I up close, everything's perfect. Yeah, everything's I'm fine. basically fucking blind. All good. Uh, unless something's like right here. I just want to be able to drive, and I want to, like, I know, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm all, like, even when I've, I've been losing weight, uh, you know, and exercising, and it's just, like, but I'm, I'm, all, I'm just going to be, like, you know, this forever. Like, it's, like, the glasses are not, I'm an ugly, awful, terrible, grumpy, fat old bat, and that's fine, but it's just, like, I would just rather not, like, look down and have them almost fall off. It's, like, I'm just so fucking tired of it. Like, my vanity, though great, I, is also realistic. And I know who I am, and I know the deal. So it's just like, honestly, the glasses probably like hide the bags under my eyes. Like I'm, I'm taking a bit of a loss, uh, uh, how I look wise by getting rid of them. But it's just like, like I always have to get new ones. They're dirty as shit, a hundred million percent of the time for no reason. I never touch them. I never do anything. And again, my boss at work also like wears stylish glasses, and he like brought in glasses cleaning things. He's like, I see you, I see you using Kleenex all the time. He's like, I can't ever get my glasses clean. I'm like, no, I can't either. Let's go get laser eye surgery together. And he's like, I'm like fine, I'll go. Like, I don't want to do it either, but I'm going to do it. 
I think that's exciting. Uh, it is. Yeah, you might start seeing these where you don't have to look at the the glowing orbs and the eyes. That's right. Like you'll just see me looking we'll, like a normal, you'll ugly, never know old. We use a ring light unless we're using crows. This, uh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the, the, the picture <laughs> back there, the chick drinking the martini and smoking that matches the, not wallpaper, but paintings on the wall that someone who wasn't me did before we moved in here, so which amazing. is wild. Um, and that the picture got dug out of the trash. So really, you know, it was all free. Except for the quarter million dollars of buying like a, like a small starter up. But um, it's fun to say it like that. It sounds like it's more. Even though it's just like a, even though that's actually cheap now. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Okay. It's like oh, it's only two hundred and twenty grand. That's nothing. Um, but yeah, then no, 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 that's all I have to say about the laser eye surgery. And I'm not gonna say too much else about it until I do it. It still might be like a few months because I have to go get like I'm gonna go get IV ketamine treatments. Like I have all these things. I'm taking care of my health. It's not just the podcast turning me into some sort of weird Joe Rogan alkalite. Did I get a lot of these ideas from listening to some of the people that he's had on his thing? Of course I did. But nevertheless, I, I, I take my supplement, supplements and, and exercise and intermittent fast. I think fast. it's fun that we both, well, at least I've been on, like the only thing I've been doing is you know, focusing on like mental health and yeah. stuff like that for the last two years and now my, you know, more physical health and staying active and all. Yeah, you like just that. you went to yoga earlier today with yes. my wife. Yes. And you guys uh, have a you guys have a yoga date and, and it's dude, nearby it's the house. Wonderful. Um so yeah, it's it's been like the last couple of years for self improvement, you know, even for you, I mean, I've seen it. I no, yeah, like I therapy's been a giant thing for me and like just realizing it is it is a fun bell curve and by fun i mean terrifying but you know you you go because you're like i could feel a little bit better and then you kind of do feel a little bit better and then you like open it's like knocking down like a fake wall and like hoarders or something and then you just realize there's like diapers to the horizon you're like oh my god like you're like <laughs> you're like oh the house yeah. is getting clean but then once we actually started like picking things up and going into the other rooms we're like oh jesus yep. there's a lot of other things to do here lot to unpack. um and there is and that's okay though but you know the thing is though i'm for it and again i always talk about how funny my therapy journey has been because I have, no one has to trick me into admitting things or dragging things out of me. Literally, what my therapist does is what you do here, where, like, if you're like, John, tell a funny story about your past. I'm like, uh, and then you're like, hey, remember the time you and Brett and Scott by was like, oh, shit. And then, like, I start going like, that's his job where he's like, well, what do you think went wrong with that? And I'm like, I don't know. I know it had to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is why I got so mad. OK, like. And but that makes me like reflect on it, and I'm like, okay, like I start to like understand where things come from, which gives you, as I've always said, it's like a weird mysticism to name the beast is to have power over it, and um, yeah, that has so many weird applications, like in your own personal personal life, like if you have like a a, a mental thing, a mental burr in your side, uh, if you know what it is, it's easier to pick it out, and the other thing I've always yelled about, like ancient people, it's like when we came up with language, that's probably when we started killing the animals that used to eat us. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, we made sharp sticks and things that throw rocks and fire way before, but then we came up with language and plans and future tenses that are like, that thing is a bear. That's a bear, we all agree? Yeah, that <laughs> keeps eating us. What the fuck? And it's like, it comes at a certain time. The bear comes at midnight. And like, well, you know what we should do? Right around midnight, we're going to stay awake. We're going to have all our sharp sticks and rocks and fire and stuff. And then it's going to come. And then, and then we're going to like, bear. yeah, and then we're going to get behind it. And it's going to go, what the? I was going to eat that one guy. And we're like, there's 10 guys. And then we <laughs> kill the bear and eat it. Yeah. And it's because we figured out that the bear comes at midnight. We named the beast and it gave us power over it. It is very... Yeah, no, I'm sure that's something I've just unlocked, but since I don't have a Netflix special, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, so enough about me. Per the clickbait. No, not uh, the clickbait yet. Okay. Because we wanted to discuss with you all, two, three, four of you listening, uh, that may have uh, been listening to our channel for some time. Oh, right. Um, yeah. We want to bring back the old rum dumpster. And 
We need ideas of stuff to review. So if you haven't seen it, Rum Dumpster was my original idea for a podcast. It was even more like half acidly done with crappy equipment than this one. <laughs> it was supposed to be mine and I am not a leader. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know. But it, it sort of went all over the place because we didn't know what to do with it. But the thing is, is that therefore it did land on some gold occasionally. And so I think that... Rum Dumpster could live on if it was only a specific thing, which would probably mean like it'd be me, Meredith, and then also Alexis, who was often a guest on there or a permanent, uh, whatever. But like, um, yeah, it would become a thing where we specifically review stuff. Like the biggest thing on the YouTube channel yeah. is a review that we did of an episode of Hoarders. Now that format, I don't quite know if it would run the same way, but it's like, and by the way, review does not mean <gasps> movies and TV shows coming out right now. It just could be like an episode of the Flintstones from 1965 or something. It or just it doesn't could be really matter. A really fucked up weird video we found on YouTube, um, or you know, like our listeners' input. <laughs> yeah, you could be, you could make a suggestion, but the episode where of even this podcast where Meredith and I screamed at the weird ectopic German baby fucking future Matrix factory thing. Um, by the way, if you didn't see that one, it's called uh, Can You Grow a Human in an Artificial Womb? It's worth a watch. And then to also do yourself a favor and go watch the whole ass fucking video that we were like yeah, commenting on. That's... But I mean, like, that Rum Dumpster would just be like only that, right? Like, only a crazy thing we found on the internet. We just fixate on it completely, or a movie, or. Well, that a would thing. only be available on YouTube, correct? Yeah, I think I would do. It, I think I would do it that way because would it like makes sense to have it on other platforms. No, because I would have to, to start to a, a separate feed for it. And it might be more like once a month, so it's like it'll just be a different thing on this YouTube channel. And the original Rum Dumpster was only on YouTube. This one, this podcast is if you want to listen to it while you're like, you know, driving a forklift or or beating up a minority with a baton or whatever you're doing. Jeez, like, I just, hope those people aren't listening. You know what? I'm going to take those listens. And we would just need we need enough to eventually get a thing where Raycon earbuds start sponsoring us. And you know what? If 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 the, if, the, if a few Memphis police officers that beat someone to death have to listen to our podcast on their Raycon earbuds for us to get that Raycon sponsorship. I mean, like... Well, I hope God is fucking tortured for that. Well, yeah, they listen to it because they're, they're the kind of guys that have, you know... We all know that mean, angry cops are the exact kind of guys that have a dominatrix stick stuff up their butt if they have the balls to actually, you know, actually go through with it. But a lot of them don't. Or a sparkler in their penis for the 4th of July. Like, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, their holiday-related S&M bondage nightmare of, 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 of giving up and letting someone else step on their testicles with a high heel. Notwithstanding, <laughs> I assume just because that's what most police officers oh. are, that they would listen to our Rotten podcast as a form of a uh, you know testicular high heel ball torture for their ears while they're driving around at work looking for people who look different than them to murder. So you know yes, and those numbers they you know no matter who's listening they still count. And here's exactly why they won't listen though because I was comparing Florida to Russia in a way that's completely fucking accurate as far as it goes. <laughs> so that well we didn't mention Russia yet. No, I did. You did. I, I, I alluded to, I think the punchline of meddling in the affairs of the Ukraine or whatever was was enough. Ah, I think you mentioned that to me before we started. No, nope, I did. It's on here. It's okay, on. Okay, okay. It's fully on here. But well, because that was my one get, because like I didn't have enough uh, fishing line there. But anyway, though, yeah. So like, I, the, the point, the joke I was making earlier is that Florida's whole book ban is like specifically. Uh, their whole thing is like, well, you know, we're not saying you can't be gay. If you have to do that, you have to do that. Hopefully not my kids, but that, and it won't be because old people only ever become gay because older people propagandize them into being gay so they can be gay with them, see? And that's the whole thing of how that works, which, you know, doesn't make any sense and isn't true. But the the fun part of that is that Again, as I sort of made a jokey parallel, Russia's whole thing is that exact thing. Mm -hmm. Russia's thing is that like, oh, oh, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. But see, you know, you just can't like say things about being gay to kids because they'll hear it and become gay and you're going to be a pedophile and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, who does that sound like here? Everybody who's like, we got to bring our guns to that drag show where they read to kids at the library. Now, I'll admit 
I don't know why we're doing that at all in the first place, but the thing is, yeah. is like I think it's I think it's generally speaking good, clean fun. Like when kids yeah. see it when kids see a drag queen, it's a character. It's it's fun. Yeah. RuPaul's Drag Grace is available on network television for you to watch whenever you feel like it or YouTube or whatever. And it's not like they see that and they're just like, well, I was going to sire multiple children that I was going to teach how to play football and shoot guns, but now I'm going to suck a dick. Hey, real, like, real that's quick. Yeah. In the Clinton era, who, like, what was the name? What did they call in the military um, about being homosexual? Oh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Okay. I just wanted to bring that up. That That's like a similar... Yeah. ...thing I've, of what's happening in Florida. And I don't You know... Florida, though, don't ask hotel. It was, it was like a little ham fisted, but I think the idea was to allow gay people into the military. It's just like, hey, let's just not make it about that. Now I get that that's oppressive, and you know, like you should just be okay with who everybody is. Yeah. But like, I think the intent with that was far more pure than the Florida thing of right now. Yeah. Like the the uh, the Florida thing of right now. I mean, I did, I'm sure other podcasters, every comedian, everybody ever has pointed out, or people, random people on Twitter, it's like, you know, it's like, you gotta have free speech, you can't be... Nah, bah, nah, nah, nah. And then it's just like, well, okay, so then, like, can there be books about being, like, gay, sort of, or whatever? It's like, no, but see how that's different, though? Because it's tricking your kids into becoming the, 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 war, the Robin to the Batman of pedophiles. Like, that's what... It's a pipeline. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, that's just a fun way of saying... You don't want to be censored, but you want to censor everyone else. Do we and, want to give a little backstory on what we're talking about? Well, yeah, Governor Ron DeSantis, our next president, is... Yeah, um exactly. Actually, you know what the fun part of that is, though? Is that, like, um, Trump kind of attacked him, and yeah, it's, like, a I funny, funny thing where... Trump, though, like, his backing doesn't mean, like, those midterms were a disaster for them, and it was all just kind of a joke, and, like, no one cares. No one cares. The dog and pony show's over. They've already moved on to the, like, I never said that part of the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I voted for... Like, there was some, like, half-ass reasonable people that were just, like, they didn't know enough about him. They're like, well, this will shake things up. Like, friends, like Ryan Nelson, who regrets it and stuff. He's just like, I just didn't, I just thought it would be like, I thought he was like a funny guy that was on wrestling and reality TV and that would just mess up things. You're and fired. It's like, You're fired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't be fired. But the, it's like, everyone kind of figured that out immediately that it's just like, okay, this guy's just like electing Jabba the Hutt to be president. It's like, oh, that's different than the emperor. It's like. Yeah, is that better, though? No, but listen, I saw a thing, um, like an but, article the other day that Trump might have his running bait be that Marjorie whatever. Oh, I hope so. Like, and so like, does oh! she. And so does she. But, no, my point is, though, is that, like, there was, like, a first wave of people who kind of figured it out right away. It's like, oh, God, this is like a cult. They, I didn't pay enough attention. It's like, I mean, I knew better. But, like, a lot of people who were just kind of, like, bros were like, oh, I didn't think this would turn into this thing where it's just this guy. Again, literally, like, I don't want to choose between Vader and Palpatine. I'm voting for Jabba the Hutt. Like, um, <laughs> that's like, you know, he remember when he fed people to a monster in his basement? Like, they just made that up. I'm like, no. Like, I watched that on TV, like, before he ever ran for press. Like, that's not a, th a smear campaign. It's like, you know, he's like, he just, like, would not pay his employees in New York or whatever, just rip people off. And it was just, like, an awful, like, everyone. It's like, I, I read tabloids about him in 1993 that were like, well, this guy's a piece of shit. And it's not like, they photoshopped those. I'm like, I still have one. Like, what the fuck? I used to say that I had one with Bat Boy on it and Trump. Like, I just took him home from the grocery store. But oh, anyway, Bad though, Boy. yeah, we all miss Bad Boy. But the thing is, <laughs> is that now even the people that were all up his ass, like he's going to fix everything and whatever, have kind of quietly been like, well, no one could have known that it was only about him making money and it was all a joke and now everyone's laughing at me. It's like, uh, so I, you know, I, 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 I was misled too. And fuck it, we need someone new like Ron DeSantis. But then Trump comes back and it's like, they're just going to... Fucking one of them is going to Ralph Nader the other. I was going to say, I hope they just split the I Nazi actually, vote and just get the fuck out of here. They are going to split the Nazi vote right in two. And that's, and that's, that's the fun thing. But anyway, the, yeah, you know, the, 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 Ron DeSantis is like, in a world without Trump, where a Trump-like thing was about to happen, he would completely win. 
Like, he's just like, I'm getting all the gay shit out of the schools. Like, everyone's like, Florida's cool. It's like, they're allowed to do meth, and no one has to go to school. And everyone's like, hell yeah, brother. It's like, just like, yeah, okay, cool. But like, now there's sort of like these opposing, like, oh, I love the idea of meth and no school and fuck gay people, but also game show host that says, fuck all those people too that already I think I like. Uh, and then just like, Joe Biden won't be alive, but whoever will win. And like, it'll be fine. <laughs> It'll well, all he be... will just be so confused and drooling and just... Blah, 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 blah. I would really love to see... Oh, and how... And in Immortan, Joe Biden. <laughs> like, I would like them to... I would like to see him be kind of revitalized through a bunch of tubes and breathing apparatuses and things. And... You know, or just, like, weekend at Bernie's him. No, that's not. We should have. We could. We're gonna have to do that with Bernie Sanders eventually. So we got to save that. Oh, idea. Like we're just gonna, Bernie. I think Bernie's gonna live forever. I hope so, and <laughs> it'll look like he is because Andrew Yang and, and Tulsi Gabbard will be holding him up. <laughs> like it'll be. It'll be a good. It'll be fine. But like, no, Joe Biden would be like, they'll have you know, someone else. Like he won't even talk anymore, right? He'll have like he'll have tubes in his neck. He'll be like held up on this thing, just like he's breathing on this thing. No, he'll be a Morton Joe from Mad Max. Like oh, he'll oh, he'll be. Yeah, 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 that's what you said. And he'll be like they'll like we, they'll they'll like have him in sort of a thing that's like sort of like a wheelchair for a cerebral palsy kid, but they'll mix it with like a loader from Aliens, and he'll just yeah. kind of like walk out, and it, he'll just be he'll just be like breathing, he's like, <laughs> and then they'll just have someone else hopefully me like there'll be all the speech writers everything because it's all you know there's no individuality in, in, in all this stuff they'll write the speech and then they'll just give it to me and i'll just be like do not succumb to the brain. like and they'll just be like he's really full of pep now and he's actually just like a one eye open with a morphine drip dying but the fucking speaker box at his chest with his like it lights up whenever it well, goes off so it looks like him, he's like, talking like a line of kids to sniff that will like totally give him the energy <laughs> no he won't do, no it'll be like the back cover of Antichrist Superstar where the kids will all be hooked up to things and that'll be go just the tubes from ten children's <laughs> like the they'll be they have these helmets with their hair in it and it'll go into his nose. Oh, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> oh, look at that guy and it'll kind of just talk like the dentist from Steve Martin from Little Shop of Horror. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone will be like, you know, I kinda like him now. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be like, yeah, just like the Antichrist Superstar Steve Martin, Dennis Little Shop of Horrors, Darth Vader, Morton. Ah, oh my God, I gotta take every Vladimir Putin's head. <laughs> It'd be like, y yeah, let's go for a third term. Like, I love this. But, you know, it's like, but you didn't like Trump because he was like, he didn't go far enough. Fuck you. You don't know what I like. God, and can, you, can you please turn that into a clip and put it on Facebook? I will. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> and on Twitter so the Chinese can find me. Yeah. Um... Andy, if you're watching from China, you're fucking never. But like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but no, yeah, the, the, the one, the, just the thing about Ron DeSantis is though, is that like he's he's destroying a dream with this whole removing books thing, you know. Like, I I seem to remember a, a scene, and it was you know based in reality, like most of the movie, and most of all three of the movies were. I don't count the fourth one, but in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. There you go. When, I knew it. <laughs> When when there's the giant book burning, and you know they're just they're just burnt they're just throwing there's this giant Nazi rally they're burning all the books, and you know I kind of see the vision I mean I get it, but like you know there is that moment when like Indiana Jones has the has the his father's journal with the locate spoilers the location of the Ark of the Covenant no the Holy Grail I'm sorry. In, uh, I was mixing them up. I think it actually, though, there is a bit of an Easter egg where it is in one of the pages. But, like, ah. uh, which is cute. I love that. I wish those movies were still good. But so he goes walking around. You know, Indiana Jones is, like, disguised as a SS officer or whatever. And he has the book. And he, like, he runs directly in, into, into Hitler. Right. And he's just like, oh. And then, like, but Hitler, like, thinks he's a fan. So he, like, signs his book and, like, gives it back to him. And, um... You know, that giant fascist Nazi book burning thing. And, you know, I just got to say that, like, if you're going to, Ron DeSantis, if you're going to remove all the books from schools, like, how are you going to have Hitler sign your book? <laughs> <laughs> That's where that joke was. That's the best I could do. 
But I gotta, you know, it is funny just about that about that scene in that movie. I do love that, like for the adults or for people who became adults later watching it. I really love the idea that, like, the fact that that book is like it has, you know, it has all these historical things in it. It has all these, um, you know, it, it, it talks about the Ark of the Covenant, the possible actual location of the, the Holy Grail, and if it were to found out, it'd be like, yeah, all that stuff in it is accurate. By the way, like, if it wasn't priceless before, and it's like, for some reason, this page is, we verified it, it's signed by Adolf Hitler. Like, what? Like, this book is worth, like, a trillion dollars. Like, <laughs> just the amount of insane, like, proves that most of the shit in the Bible is real. Like, even the crazy stuff. <laughs> Like, just Hitler signed it, and it's like it turns out in the story he didn't know he was signing it, and the guy who was holding it when he signed it actually, like, killed a bunch of Nazis with a magic box that was in a different part of the Bible. Like, yeah. Before. Like, just the, it's just like, I just love the idea of some other, like, a new, the new Indiana Jones movie, here we go, rather than being, like, old Harrison Ford or, like, whatever, just be, like, a new person, his grandson, it's just anybody, some actor. Harrison Ford won't allow it. Really? Yeah, he said no one else can be Indiana Jones but him. I hate him now because of that. Well, because everyone knows the smart idea is to run it like James Bond. Because Indiana Jones is based well, off of, great idea. Yeah. of old old Saturday morning serials because there's guys... If you look at these old black and white short films that would come on before the feature of an adventure guy or men's magazines, they all dress like Indiana Jones. He looks the way he does. Because he's based off of a kind of an arc, a stereotypical archetype of adventure man, like that, and that was on purpose. That they were doing that. They were just they wanted to elevate, kind of like how you know George Lucas, who was also involved, but like Star Wars was supposed to be like a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon space adventure serial or whatever. But it's like they just kind of knocked it the fuck out of the park mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, it, Indiana Jones too. Like they really like these things were kind of meant to be an homage to the cheesy things that they loved, and they were they ended up being like amazing. Um, so like, yeah, you just have, doesn't even have to be his kid. You just James Bond it. You just make, don't make four or five of them, make like 50 of them, but just, it's like, oh yeah, now he's in like the seventies. Seriously, think of all the cool adventures. Yeah. There's so much stuff. Have it be like, oh yeah, there's like a version where he's like in the mid 1800s, you know, just whatever. Like you could just do anything with that guy, but he's a young man. That gets women with a whip and a hat and a revolver yeah. and like whatever. He's not Harrison Ford. And like, and the easy way out too is like they had a whole, the third one had Sean Connery, who was a James Bond, but he's older, is Indiana Jones's dad, who used to do some Indiana Jonesing himself. <laughs> and that's the whole point. And then it's like, well, now Harrison Ford is that guy. And you pick, you know, hopefully not Pete Davidson, but whoever is like the oh. new guy. And that's just what you do. And I would. I, I would, like, be on board with that where it's like, oh, yeah, this started in, like, 1982 and they're still making him in 2023 because there's been, like, three Indiana Joneses by now. You know, it's like, like, you know, like Sean Connery and then Pierce Brosnan or George Lazenby and whatever. It's too bad they didn't think of this sooner. No, but they didn't think of it at all. And they have, know, they have some guy, okay, some guy like me who actually was like, John's pretty fucking smart, who popped off and got fired for bringing this up in front yeah. of Harrison Ford. Yeah. And now we just have well, bullshit. Well, no, I just, read a, uh, I just read an article saying that he would like the Indiana Jones franchise to die with him. Well, then I hope he dies, and then they go back on it, and then they make new ones with different people, and then they just I switch mean, them out. I mean, I'm sure they can. I mean, he doesn't, like, have that much... Well, it's Spielberg. Know, no, he obviously... Yeah, he does. He de- he's made some demands, even with Star Wars, because he's yeah, so grandfathered, great-grandfathered at this point, into the fucking, like... But my, here's my point, though. In a perfect world where they actually, like, moved on and started doing... Boy, this episode has nothing to do with the fucking. No, I talked enough about Ron Designers. Fuck it. Fuck his dumbass. I don't want to. I want. Here's what I want to talk about. I want. And by the way, we're like a few minutes away from Dear Asshole, so it doesn't even matter. But I would love a weird Deadpool esque meta Indiana Jones thing down the road where they find. Like, they don't really know there's an Ark of the Covenant. They don't really know that the Holy Grail is real, and in the end of the movie, it falls into it. You know, it's gone. And they don't know all this stuff. And they literally, to what I was saying earlier, they find this journal by a guy that they can verify as a real guy because they kind of know who, you know, Indy's father's, you know, so it's like his great great grandson by now. And it's like, you know, he wrote this journal that had all these like, 
you know, translated hieroglyphics and Aramaic and like all this stuff. It goes to these like places that we actually figured out were real, you know, where like, oh, the, 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 the Holy Grail is actually a thing that you can find. And the Ark of the Covenant is actually a thing that you can find. It's in the Pentagon right now. And there's a page signed by Adolf Hitler. And there's all this crazy shit attached to the book. The book is now the thing because they're so far. It's like young Frankenstein. They're so far removed from, by the way, that's a fun comparison. They're so far <laughs> removed from the actual events <sighs> that it's like his great, great grandson, you know, is, is just like, my father wasn't crazy. You put the negative to negative and the positive to positive. And they, and they're like, yeah, now there's, there's a mythos around this book and everyone's like, Oh, it's bullshit. It's not like a, is it the red? It's not a real thing, like, you know, but they're like, no, the Joneses were a real family. They're still living members right now. There's still other people's accounts of, like, oh, him going in, and, and he was in Cairo at the time that this thing that the Pentagon now has was dug up. They got it from the Third Reich after it was dug up by slaves in Northern Africa during World War II and, like, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, okay, the rest of it might be real. So it's like this signature, we actually prove that's f completely real. Like, we like Hitler found this. So it's like, we have to find the rest of this journal. And it's like, it actually contains things like that are just unbelievable. Like it, it in and of itself is worth to like somebody like Elon Musk, like a trillion dollars, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like, then his great grandson is like, no, I don't want the wrong people to find this. And you know why it belongs in a museum. <laughs> like that's the fuck. And then we have like Indiana Jones six is actually like the, the descendants finding the remnants of their old adventures that are connected to these actual magical artifacts. And then they get sucked into the whole world of that, like all over again. And they end up having the same. And that's how, that's how you keep it alive. Mm. without Harrison Ford of the Joe Biden machine just being like, I'm still in there. Like, just dying like the, the emperor go. in uh, the Dark Crystal. <laughs> like, I am still Dr. Jobs. Oh you know, God. like, and that, and, and by the way, where's, I want Season more of that two? show, Netflix! Yeah. yeah. Fuck them for canceling that. That was a Ooh, though, show. it's been so long. I can watch it again now. I, last time I watched any of that was before we bought the house, and that was oh still 2020. Yeah, shit. Wow, that's it's such a great... We're talking about the Dark Crystal. The Dark Crystal uh, TV series on Netflix, yes. based off of the incredibly awful and boring movie from yeah, the 80s. Yeah, just a boring movie from the 80s that you like, really don't quite understand, because they just kind of like throw you in it. Well, and it's also boring in the way that like they throw you in it, which is kind of... It would, that's almost the earmark of a good movie if done the right way, but it was... That was, yeah. The, the problem is that it was built off of the... I don't know what I want to say. The sort of, like, the good graces, the, the social capital of, of other Henson things. You know, they did successful things, and then they're like... Also, it kind of fucked up Labyrinth. Because the Dark Crystal is so boring, no one went to go see Lab. You know, the one where they were like, okay, what if we make a fun one that has goddamn David Bowie's wiener in it? Like, let's... He's, like, singing and dancing. It's it's fucking amazing. And, like, apparently that was, like, a... It's a cult classic, but it was, like, a flop. Whereas the Dark Crystal actually, like, made money in the theater, so you, like, go back and watch it on VHS, and you're just like, what? This is really boring and stupid. But the universe they built was really cool. So then the Netflix thing where there's, like, a whole series about it where there's, like... I mean, I, I have like a t-shirt with the Chamberlain and then, mmm, margarita. And it looked amazing. Oh, yeah. And the, the, the old one was kind of an impressive, you know, Henson yeah. DreamWorks. Yeah. Thing. The new one, though, there's like only the enough CG for it to, it's like the Mad Max, the Fury Road rulers. There's just a pinch of CG where you can't do it, but the everything is puppets. Everything is like people in full, like three people running full-size robotic suits and stuff and it's like amazing and the story is amazing in that one like it's it's a you know maybe we'll have to review that on our rum dumpster review show just the series or something because like it is like there's moments of like like the real feelings in the in the uh the dark crystal netflix series where even the skexies kind of like they know that they came from like somewhere else. And they got split apart from the ancients, but then they're like, you know, we've devoted our life to this ideology, but what if there is nothing? Like they actually have like existential like dread, even as they're doing the most evil things ever. And you see like some of the other characters try to like become Skeksis or whatever. Like they betray people. Like it's very like 
heady of a thing, but it's also a very visual crazy thing. That's it's just like stuff like that just doesn't happen. The thing is, I can't get that mad about them not doing a second one because I'm like, dude, the first one usually doesn't happen in this kind of thing. You know, you don't get that anymore. You don't get that in the fall year of our Lord of 2018 or whatever the hell that came out. Like you just. I just Absolutely don't. I wish they wouldn't have assumed that they were getting a second season because it kind of left it a little too open to where it's like, oh, that's it. Yeah, but I also like with the the existence of the original boring movie. I don't know that I care because, well, yeah, I know, because we know where it we goes, know happens, so that's... and I feel like the only right. the only other moves to make after that first season are like a big cool like battle of good and evil with all yeah. this action and i'm like and that, that would be awesome maybe maybe you don't always the, the sequel to alien doesn't always become aliens sometimes you try to do that and it's like this is dumb i like the sort of impending dread and personal story stuff of like the the first one and then it's like this time it's war it's like oh god like it could have been I'd rather not one than like a completely cringily bad one. Like, and well, who knows? Yeah, I would too. Who knows? And I, you know, I, it's not that I don't have faith in who did it, but the thing is, when things start making money and there's no clear person who's responsible, then like the people who are holding the money get to be like, well, here's what we should do. Like, well, okay, whatever. We just want to keep this rolling. And it's like it loses a little bit of that, that, that ingenuitive, individualistic spark of like weird ideas, you know? So, and maybe not. Maybe it would have been brilliant, but... We'll never know, because they're not going to make a season two. I know. Well, you know what I wish? I wish, and who knows? I haven't read through the whole thing. But I wish there was a page in Dear Asshole to send at Netflix for canceling all of the most interesting stuff that they ever have. Oh my god, that would be the best. Because I would, I would... We should write our own. Whereas I often get confused by this horrible, stupid book. And a quick, you know, recap. It's this book of tear-out pages where if you don't... A, if you don't know how to just let shit go. <laughs> B, if you don't know how to stand up for yourself in person with your words... Even if it might make you into a Karen, which in most of the cases of this book, it absolutely would. But let's say yes. on, a, on a, a weird wing and a prayer, perhaps you're actually right about what you're mad about, you fucking entitled bitch. Like, maybe, you know, maybe. But this book is for people that not only can't even write their own passive-aggressive notes, that no one should be leaving for anyone because I don't love living in a weird, insane asylum of, like, some sort of weird reality show full of mean mean ladies that give like he's not going to get away with this like really like yeah i'm going to leave a note it's like oh god like and that's where we like we look up to that as like the height of humor also we're trying to figure out if this book full of of of, of pre-written passive aggressive notes to leave for people like oh i don't know servers who didn't lick your taint well enough or whatever <laughs> else the fuck is in here yeah what are some of the let's go oh, go ahead i just wanted to point out is it the top? Is that on every letter? The no, crap? no, this is a special one, I think. Ooh. So this is a special episode. But yeah, Dear Asshole trying to set me up on a date. It's like, well, maybe I won't try anymore. It's like, Dear Asshole had the library book before me. It's like, okay, how are they going to read this? Yeah. Uh, Dear Asshole is still my parking space. I guess you put it under their windshield wiper, but is it yours? No. And then, the fr yeah, Dear Asshole restaurants. So the very first one is shitting on, on, on the people who, like, are, are trapped in this <laughs> dying thing where... I read something about how, like, the entire service industry that started in, like, like a little pre-mid-century was a way to give the new burgeoning, like, middle class a taste of actual, like, upper-crust wealth, mm -hmm. which they're not part of, like, as much. I know it's splitting hairs because everybody's just p pouring under the boot of this rotten nightmare, but it's, like, at one point there was, like, this thing called middle class people, but they still were just, like, pretenders to the throne of people born into wealth. <laughs> and, like you know like but they were like oh i want to experience a little of that and it's like well we'll have these you you can't afford servants in your I think castle called commoners yeah well <laughs> no but the middle class was a, it is a curveball it was like <laughs> they're not serfs they're actually like they're they're working for the big capitalist you know, people but it's like some of them maybe own mid-sized small businesses that got bigger and they're like right. whatever and it's like, well, they don't have servants or family history or, like, all this garbage that everyone thinks is cool because uh, we're an awful, awful race of people that an asteroid will hopefully soon destroy. But, like, 
they, they were they were like, oh, do you want to you want you know what you want? It's like you want a little taste, a little taste of the upper crust. So you have like a waiter that you can like mock while he brings you things on a silver platter, and it's like, well, you can do that by going to a restaurant, and you can go to like a retail thing, and it's like they're they're. They used to get paid. The thing is, though, is like like retail employees in the beginning of all of this, and I mean ha- more than half a century ago, got paid like the family butler, which was actually decently. Like it would just be like, uh, uh, like a butler would be able to be like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm worthy of envy because I work for one of the finest families of the Eastern Seaboard, and it's like, yeah, you would pay like the poor kid that would have. To, but then it just became this thing that was like, well, that's the only jobs available, and it's like. Cool. Everyone's still really into the idea of debasing you and throwing shit at you, though, because they like want to taste that upper crust while their grip on middle class slowly slips away. Like it's you know it's this whole fucking awful nightmare that like it brought us like clerks in Generation X, where it's just like, look, there's no other jobs, but I'm not gonna kiss your ass. And they're like, but you're supposed to. It's like I don't get paid enough to. It's like it's rude to discuss money. And it's like, oh, everyone in this country keeps getting shot. Okay, so like. Anyway, this book was written by people who don't understand one part of anything I just said. And <laughs> a couple of nice young ladies who I'm sure have never berated anyone in public. And I was keeping trying to figure out if this was ironic or not. And I feel like it's not. Let's see, so far. It's not. But so it's called Dear Asshole. And I read a page every podcast because my parents got me this for Christmas. And I don't know whether or not they were being ironic or what the hell's happening there. And I don't think I, a lot of thought. I haven't was asked. Put into well, it. that's very likely. But I no offense, I, I Scott's do, parents. No, that's no, the thing. I keep listen. I keep thinking if they listen to this, and I don't think they do. I think they kind of used to listen to Rum Dumpster because it came out in the pandemic. And yeah, like, there's nothing else to do then. Yeah, and it's like, oh, we can't hang out and now. It's like we can, just that we don't. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, we don't need to watch this now. <laughs> but like, yeah, I figure like I've brought it up so many times that they would have said something to me by now. But clearly, they don't watch these, at least not to the end, and no one does. But. Anyway, that's not true. Thirty-one people watched. Or that, no, to I, I, I mean, uh, we're gonna have a thousand regular. We're gonna start having paid advertisements, and I'm still gonna pretend three people listen. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's getting kind of popular beyond like. No, yeah, we're towards the end here. It is funny. Like the metrics are like either you're already famous or you had a brilliant idea, and you have like hundreds of people or thousands of people or millions of people, or like. You're like, I'm going to start a podcast. And it's like, you kind of do it. And you have like three listeners and you do it for two years. And you give up eventually, you know, because no one knows you're not interesting. And no one know, no one who you're interviewing is famous, even though they seem like it from your local <laughs> music scene or whatever. And like, you know, it's, it's just, it just doesn't happen. And that's very common, you know. But this one, it's weird. I'm not going to say it's a middle ground between those two because it's way closer to being nothing. But it has repeat listeners and people that care. And it might actually be because, like, everyone thinks that they're as, like, charismatic and funny and I am as I am. But, like, you're not and I actually am. Like, I hate to say it. But, okay. I hate to say it, folks. I hate to say it. The Joe Biden machine's very good. It has lots of tubes and another guy talking for him. And maybe that's better. His brain is gone. But the man talking through his tube is John Wheeler. I like him. (laughs) Well, that's right. You named yourself that. (laughs) <laughs> John Wheeler, that's me. <laughs> no, the guy that does the talking. No, I decided yes. that I would talk through the Joe uh, Morton Joe Biden's yes, robot yes, body. Yes, like, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Well, what the? F- who else are they gonna get? I don't know. Like Alec Baldwin, he's gonna have to talk through the Trump robot. It's just uh, you know. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he's busy. Also in jail, maybe or shooting people, hopefully. Gosh. But I, I want to read from this book to you. Um, yes. So this this is a weird page. If you're watching on YouTube, there's like this header. What the hell? It it's crap. 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 It's not C R A P, and it says the cut the committee to restrict asshole performance. Sounds really stupid. It's a butt plug. Mm. So no, that aids asshole performance. Well, it depends on what you want with it, and if it's to stick your dick in it, that's what you want. If it's to poop without having a thing in there in the way, then you're fucking everything up. Right. But, sex. So, dear <laughs> asshole trying to get in my pants. Oh, so this is maybe about butt sex. I don't hey, know. Yeah. Probably it's going to be like, how dare you imply that any woman ever likes that? I don't care what anyone says. I don't, so no one does. Just guess. I mean, no one uh, says that. These people might. Okay, dear asshole trying to get in my pants. Let's see. 
the horrible, awful world of someone trying to show you a good time through sex and you just telling them to fuck off because I would rather read what this book. I don't know. Back off! Just because we converse twice doesn't mean I want your illegitimate love child. No one wants to put a baby in anyone. Is that... By, okay, I need to pause already. Oh, yeah, you know, I... I just... I imagine we probably have zero female listeners, and that's fair. <laughs> but I'm like, pretty sure we have one. Okay, but I did... Oh, yeah, the, one in jail. But the thing is, is that, like, this whole thing with, like, do you want to have sex? It's like, uh, I'm not trying to buy a house and have a baby with you. It's like, oh, good, me neither. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's like, oh, just because it's fun? Well, are we going to do it again? Are we going to, like, get a joint bank account? It's like, no. No, you like you, you watch porno sometimes, right? And it's like, well, of course, it's my right to... Okay. Do you want to, like, maybe, like, have a little... Fu- no, 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 because, see, then we have to start a family because my family's wondering when I'm going to have kids, and they won't shut up, and it's like, okay, well, what do I point to? You? You? No. We can't have... You know, it's like, this book is written by just these insecure, awful, rotten fucking people. Now, I don't want your illegitimate love child. Yeah, condoms. Or, you know, again, butt sex. Whatever. <laughs> Since you can't seem to pick up on my subtle clues of rejection, like me almost vomiting every time you come near me, or rolling my eyes every time you open your mouth, here's a formal statement. You will never see what's between my legs. Mm. Ick. Mm -hmm. Okay, or to put it in language your feeble mind may be better able to understand the chances of becoming intimate fall somewhere between a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle being elected to the presidency, which is pretty fucking likely at this point. I was gonna say, uh... And Elvis coming back from the dead, uh, let's not count that out either. So quit rubbing up on me like a deprived puppy. Deprived of rubbing? And just let it go. It ain't happening. P.S. Never. P.P.S. Ever. Jesus. It must be really hard to just have people trying to fuck you. <laughs> I can't imagine the terror. I, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm a guy. And you know what? It is hard. As when it, when I was a young man and I accidentally started making music that people liked, a lot of people wanted to fuck me. And you know, like later on, everyone's like, "Yeah, you tricked them. You're a bad person." Like I just okay. But they're the kind of people that wrote that book. Who are like, I would not like anyone who doesn't have a neck tattoo and hasn't been to jail putting a kid in me. I don't know. I just want to be mean. I can't even think of anything. It's just, I, you know, like, of, of course you don't want unwanted sexual advances, right? I mean, like, let's look at this from a different way. That's like a real, like, okay, if it's honestly bad, it's like really bad, right? Like, it's like, oh, you're a creep. Yeah. So, like... If that was what was in here, like, you know, it's like, oh, you, you, you fucking creep. Like, maybe it's even so unfunny that you don't make it in your silly book or whatever. Or if it is worth mentioning, you're like, you say something about the person. You're like, I don't. This one, you know what? Here's my main critique of this chapter, page, whatever, of Dear Asshole. It's like, I don't know why you're holding back. I don't know why you're like. I don't care that you have a homemade neck tattoo. I know the last three women that you had kids with before you went to jail for the fifth time thought it was hot, but I don't. Like, I don't even care that you've been to jail. Yeah, my panties are a little wet, but that's just because you look a little bit like the guy from... I don't know. Like, I can't name... But it, it's just like, just pick, just be mean. Be mean in a real way. This way, and I brought this up before, this hugely suggests that I don't know that whoever wrote this has ever even been in this situation. It feels like kind of a vague, glossed over platitude where they're just like, well, women don't like men, like, right? Yeah, okay, that's a whole page. Like, well, yeah, of course. And it's like, who's rubbing on you? Are you at like a dance? Like, how young are you? Like, I don't feel like the people who wrote this are under 50. Are you somewhere with like laser lights and Jersey Shore music where people are rubbing on you? Or is someone in the dentist's office waiting room just rubbing on you? In which case, you should call the police rather yeah. than leaving a note. I feel like they've never been in any of these scenarios and they're just like going on what they've heard. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like someone who hasn't lived their life is just like, well, what do people like? Like some a dear asshole who got a book deal for some 
shitball reason that you don't really deserve. Well, apparently they've written blogs that have many of clicks or views. I don't know. Whatever the thing says, it's like really also. Oh, it's so like whatever scary. sweetheart garbage deal came out of whatever sort of maybe thing one of the two of you kind of did. And then you're like, well, you know what would be a funny idea for a book? They said, not realizing that it would have to have... Well, there's no numbers on the pages. There has, to be, there has to be 200 of these. This is the length of like Did a... you fold over the... the... I will. Okay. But Don't like, want to read the same thing fucking twice. Ever I know. This, with this thing. Although, you know what? The next one, and I'm not going to read any of it other than the title. But it's the first one, which, without reading the body of it, which I'm sure will ruin it. It's probably stupid as fuck. But it's the first premise where if maybe you're in a place, if you're in the same workplace, or maybe this is for someone else in your house. Like, if it's straight up public, this won't work. But there's a two-thirds chance. And it's dear asshole who didn't flush the toilet. This is the first one I could maybe get behind. So you know yeah. what? Maybe this starts, Next maybe dear, dear asshole starts turning around. Do you think also that, like, it's a slight play on words of Dear Abby? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. For sure. Oh, 101 tarot letters. So it is 101 pages long. Okay. Oh, lovely. Oh, right. So to my point, so they were like, we could write a book. Like, I can just feel how this was made. Like, we could we could write a book of, like, thing, like things you want to write to all the jerks in your life or whatever. And it's like, what if the book had tear out pages and you could actually tear it. It's like when Kramer made that coffee table book that turned into a coffee table and he went on Regis <laughs> and Kathy Lee and they were like, that could be us. And the coffee table book, it's about coffee tables. Like, but Regis watch this. It's like, it turns into a coffee table. It's like, I love this book. And they're like, I want to be Kramer. And they said the N word a bunch. And then so like, but yeah, and then they're like, oh, we have to. And so they're like, oh yeah, we have this brilliant idea. So that idea, right, this has, it works in a pitch written all over it. Now it's like, it's a, it's a bunch of things you write to the assholes in your life. And it's like, but here's the thing. It's a tearaway book and you can leave them. You can pick them out. And like some publisher is just like, well, books are dying. This sounds great. Whatever. It's like, but here's the thing. Okay. How many? It's like, oh, I guess like 101 dog jokes, 101 fart jokes. Yeah. 101. Yeah. Okay. So 101 is like, they wrote like three and they're like, <laughs> Fuck. We need 98 more <laughs> six. And they're like, dear asshole, I guess who wants to, like, fuck me? Yeah, everyone hates that. Or dear, everyone hates going to restaurants and they're just like, they don't get what they want right away, right away, right away. That won't make us look bad later. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, 95 more. <laughs> they're bad people. They're bad people that got a book deal based off of a flimsy thing. And I love a flim flam, by the way. I'm a con artist. I discovered, well, we're going to do an episode about this, by the way, and, and Alexis will be, a, I discovered recently that, okay, so Alexis's father, Rui, my father-in-law, mm -hmm. he moved here from Portugal, mm -hmm. and it, it was back when it was crappy. He moved to, like, uh, Newark, New Jersey in the 70s because it was nicer than Portugal, which is at the, same time. at the time. Now Portugal's, like, awesome. They're going to maybe retire there. So anyway, they're going, like, this month. Rui has to go in person to renew his dual citizenship or whatever. Yes. And once he does that, his whole family is in on it, right? Uh -huh. And so that means his daughter is able, if she wants to fill out the paperwork, is able to also get dual citizenship. That's and awesome. so does her husband. Now, the fun part about all of that is that Portugal is part of the EU. It also has, out of all the countries in the EU, eh, the most, if you're a citizen, yeah, we don't really pay attention to too much what you're doing when you're coming in and out of here. But once you're in, you are a member of the European Union, along with your American citizenship. And I can't think of a worse family Christmas present for one of the most unscrupulous, amoral con men to ever have a podcast. But baby... We're going international. <laughs>
The Reverend John Wheeler podcast takes zero responsibility for the words, actions, or ideas of its host, guests, or listeners. Though the people on the screen may at times be speaking directly to you and may occasionally give you direct calls to action, neither Reverend John nor the Alchemical Cocktail Lounge are under any moral or legal obligation to answer for the potentially disastrous repercussions that may arise if you are stupid enough to actually follow the orders of a raving lunatic. Think for yourself and do whatever you want because you're on your own. If anyone ever tries to sue this podcast, Black SUVs will converge on your location in the darkness of night and you will never be seen again. Remember to like and subscribe.